What happened in the last days of Judah is a picture of what happens in the last days. It's a type. Only then it was Babylon. In the book of Revelation, it'll be Babylon the Great. But the same constellation of events will lead up to it. The moral breakdown and the spiritual seduction will set the stage for Babylon the Great, the same as it paved the way to Babylon in Jeremiah's day. You understand? Verse 1 of Jeremiah 23. Oi woe to the shepherds. The Hebrew word for shepherd is the same as the Hebrew word for pastor. Roe. Most pastors, however, are neither good shepherds nor wolves in sheep's clothing. Most of the third category Jesus talked about, hirelings. The ministry has become their career. It's their job. It's the business. Their priorities, numbers, money. They're standing in the denomination, the building trust, pension fund, housing allowance, anything and everything but the truth of God's word and the welfare of the sheep. The first problem is not the false prophets and false teachers. The first problem is the pastors who will not protect the flock of Christ from those wolves. Those who know the purpose-driven lie is based on marketing psychology. John Piper, cheerleader for Rick Warren, go on YouTube watching him leading the Lectio Divina with Beth Moore, New Age Visualization. A real pastor would really prefer to teach the truth to 15 people in a house group than teach a compromised combination of truth and error to 15,000 in a Greg Laurie megachurch. That man knows better and he's compromising with what he knows is wrong. Want to debate me? Get a camera. Let's do it. Bring your friend Rick Warren. He says the following. We have to have a global peace plan. We have to partner, unite with people of other faiths to bring in global peace. Even if they worship different gods than we do, we have to partner with Mormons, with Catholics, but Jews, with Hindus, Buddhists, and Muslims. The book by Peter Kreeft, Ecumenical Jihad. We have to have ecumenical union with Islam to morally redeem society. Who endorsed it? J.I. Packer, the reformed Calvinist theologian, and the late Chuck Colson. We have to unite with people who worship other gods. We have to unite with demon worshipers to bring in global peace. This is Antichrist, you understand? That's what the youth is being taught. Young people in Christian churches around the world are absorbed by Hillsong. Is Hillsong worship or entertainment? What used to be the Christian music ministry is now the Christian music industry. Most Christian recording companies are owned by secular conglomerates. They have pop charts, hit parades, disc jockeys, everything the world has. The industry is largely based in Nashville, Tennessee. Twice nationally broadcasted news documentaries exposing financial corruption at Hillsong in Australia on ABC News. Twice. I was asked on the radio in Sydney by Dr. Gordon Moyes about this. Brian Houston, his book, You Need More Money. This is what he's teaching to Christian youth as a model of discipleship. You need more money. What he says. They're all reading it. Then the patriarch of Hillsong, Frank Houston, a homosexual pedophile. He was always that and everybody knew it, who was around him, but they couldn't prove it, but then it comes out. What happens next? Bobby Houston, she puts out her series, Christian Women Love Sex. 13, 14, 15 year old Christian girls are absorbed by it. And early adolescence, this is what they're teaching kids at Hillsong. They take the focus off the person and they put it on the act. 
Same as Hollywood. Same as the world. Why does Hillsong do that? Because it is of the world. It is not of the kingdom of Jesus. They are polluting the minds of Christian teenagers with that stuff. Rick Warren, as of last month, said he doesn't oppose Proposition 8. He has no problem with same-sex marriage anymore, said Mr. Warren. Handsomely endorsed by everyone from John Piper to Mark Driscoll. The Sanhedrin could not refute what Jesus was saying, so they attacked him for saying it. What charge do you bring against him? What accusation? Oh, he's no good. If he wasn't no good, we wouldn't have told you. He's wicked because we told you he was wicked. When you see this, no matter who is talking, it may be the voice of a human, but it's the words of Satan. He has a critical spirit. Hebrews 4.12 were commanded to have a critical spirit. If you don't have a critical spirit, I'm not saying if you don't have a critical spirit, you're going to be deceived. I'm saying if you don't have a critical spirit, you're deceived already. He is a master deceiver. In the last days, these deceptions will multiply greatly and are already doing so. That's the bad news. The good news is that if we hold fast to the Lord Jesus, he doesn't have to deceive us. Praise God, he is coming soon. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock. Notice the remnant. He will have a remnant when he comes back.